While everyone else is talking about the Chiefs' Super Bowl victory, Taylor Swift and Joe Biden's decreasing ability to form a coherent sentence, we're here today to discuss something really important because tax time is approaching. Sure, you'd rather talk about anything other than this, but understanding the latest changes to the U.S. tax code should be very important to all U.S. citizens. That's why we're happy to welcome Clinton Donnelly back to the show for his annual update on what you need to know regarding changes and how the U.S. government looks at cryptocurrency. The tax man is back, baby. So let's consult the thousands of pages of tax code and find out what you need to know on our Tax This, episode number 713 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, two, ignition. Who's bad? Welcome back to the Bad Crypto Podcast, the show for the crypto serious and the crypto curious. And congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs for winning the uh, the scripted Super Bowl. Way to go. Right. Yeah. So scripted. I don't know. I, I would say this, though, man. I was thinking about this in the um, overtime game. I was like, dude, this is one of the very best football games I've seen maybe ever. Even if we lose. Because here's the thing. Dude. My bank account is so full when it comes to, to the Chiefs' victories. You know what I mean? What I wanted was I wanted the Kansas City Royals to win a World Series when my kids were young. I wanted them to be able to see a Jayhawk, Kansas Jayhawks championship. And I wanted us to at least go to a Super Bowl. Yeah. Go to one. I mean, in 50 years of my, of my life, they hadn't went to a Super Bowl since 1970, and I was born in 73, so I'd ne I had never seen one, right? And then now in the last five years, they've been to four. So it's just insane. So – um, yeah, what a crazy ride it's been. You know what? Was thinking about that. We can maybe talk about that after the fact, but was thinking about the whole Save Our Chiefs thing from back in the day that, that we were a part of helping flying banners over Arrowhead to, to get them to fire the previous coach. And then they, they ended up rushing out and hiring Andy Reid. Like we had a small part uh, of the butterfly effect of, of yeah. getting some, you, you know, gr growing and using the community to, to push change that we wanted. And who would have thought that would have came anywhere near this? It's just insane to me. And once again, they have pulled out the victory three times in four years. Needless to say, Aaron is very happy. And yeah. uh, that, I'm over it. Quite frankly, I'm already over it. I'm ready for the three Pete. Let's go get and get another one next year. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about something that may be more important to your bottom line, unless you're getting Patrick Mahomes salary and, you're probably not, um, and that is taxes for the fifth year in the row. Clinton Donnelly is joining us, and you're going to want to listen in to see what's up. Here we go. And here to talk about our favorite subject in the world and yours as well, and you should pay attention to every word that comes out of his mouth, is our tax expert, especially knowledgeable in the realm of crypto tax, Mr. Clinton Donnelly of CryptoTaxAudit.com. Good, sir. Welcome back to the show for your fifth appearance. Um, competing with, um, I think, Ronnie Moas was our all-time leader. And I think, was was John McAfee on the show four or five times, Trav? You're muted, Trav. Your lips are moving, and I can't hear what you say. There we go. Yeah, I think he was on the show four times where we interviewed him. And then we had that fifth time where he was on virtual blockchain week oh there you go so clinton you're you're like number two then for the show right now with a well, bullet. it's an honor to be behind mcafee i have to admit uh although he died in a prison in spain so glad to be here yes we're glad that you're here uh, alive wherever in the world you are right now you're in are you in europe these days i'm enjoying the southern coastline of portugal uh. Beautiful. And it is beautiful here. And you know, one thing that we all, when we talk about why we like living in Portugal, it is really a peaceful place. You know, the policemen don't walk around with guns. Uh, everything is very cheap. And it's a really hang back type of spirit. Everybody should come visit. You know, before we get into taxes, uh, my first question is actually around the golden visa. It's my understanding that, uh, you know, Portugal's been a great plan B 
for a lot of uh, American citizens for years. And there's been some changes because some of the people of Portugal aren't happy with rising property prices. What can you tell us about what's happened there? And is a golden visa still a, an option for people to uh, become a, a citizen of Portugal? I'm glad you asked. Portugal is actually the number one foreign destination for Americans. Uh, it, it really is a cool, cool country. Uh, high percentage of the population speaks English, so it's really easy to get around, and it's extraordinarily affordable. Portugal, in the panoply of, of European countries, would be considered a poor, a poorer country. So the cost of labor is low. Everything. I mean, I get a drink. I get a, I get a glass of wine at a restaurant. I pay roughly two to three euros, which is you know about the same amount of dollars. Uh, so I mean, that's and you know never drop a hundred dollars at a restaurant. For my wife and I would never go that high, so, which is I came back from the U.S. and you know that's that's breakfast. Uh, the <laughs> gold visa, uh, a lot of great ways to for Americans. They really want Americans to come to Portugal. Uh, they want you to come and live and and spend money in Portugal. That they're really cool about taxes here. Uh, the golden visa is basically the idea: if I come and I buy an apartment or house and it's over a certain price then it leads to, over a period of time, becoming a permanent resident in Portugal and having a passport. So that was taken away because it caused really hard inflation and made the price of housing really out of reach in a lot of areas in the country. So they, they cut that off. But they have something now called the D7 visa, which uh, you come over, you say you could provide for yourself, you know, you have a, a retirement income or whatever, and um, they will not tax your foreign sourced income uh, for 10 years. And after 10 years, uh, you can become a citizen. I have a friend of mine who's going, you know, he's going through all the steps. He, he, his goal is to become a citizen within five years. Citizen means uh, you have a passport and a permanent right to be in the country. That's pretty reasonable. That's a great, that's one of the easiest places in the world to do that. In, in a place that's really, you, know, you might want to actually live as opposed to, you know, some strange island in the Pacific in the Atlantic you've never heard of. There you go. And, uh, and coincidentally, in Portugal was the place where I had the very best lasagna of my life, <laughs> which was good. So, I mean, if you like lasagna and you like saving money on your taxes, maybe Portugal is a great place. Actually, it was in a place called Sintra, which was right oh. off, off of Lisbon. It was like an 11, 1200-year-old um, castle. And there was a place called Lawrenceville Hotel or something. And the chef there made, dude, it was unbelievable. So I, I think of that often because I tried lasagna all over the world. <laughs> and uh, that was Citra that. is an amazing, I mean, that's like the number one tourist destination in Portugal. Super, super cool. Lots of medieval castles. You know, in November, we have uh, the, the annual Solana break, Breakout Conference. Mm. Uh, so they have their annual conferences here. Uh, Lisbon has become pretty much the crypto mecca of, of Europe. Uh, very, very attractive, friendly place for that. Web3 conferences is here. So it's really cool. Even Taylor Swift does concerts here. That's great. And if you live in Lisbon, you're actually a lesbian, which is cool. <laughs> I've always wanted to be one of those. Uh, so let's talk, <laughs> let's talk a little about taxes. So, you know, we've had, as I said, you're the fifth time you've been on the show. Um, <clears throat> how do you see the landscape of taxes evolving for crypto, uh, especially with the uh, supposed increased attention from the IRS as they hired 800,000 new <laughs> right agents or whatever. So what's what's new that people might need to be aware of? All right, let's look at it for three parts. First of all, let's just set the base, the base plate, right? What is taxable about cryptocurrency? Anytime you sell or exchange cryptocurrency, you experience some sort of gain and that gain is taxable in US dollars, okay? Buying crypto is not a taxable event. Hodling crypto, not actually selling or exchanging at all, is not taxable. If you get strange airdrops from people you don't know about, don't want, that's not taxable. Staking rewards are taxable, mining, proceeds are taxable. When you're in DeFi, the rewards you get from various, Activities are taxable in the fair market value in U.S. dollars when you receive them. So that's my, that's that's pretty much pretty much if you experience a gain and you know when you've experienced a gain or loss, that's taxable. And I will say this: losses are very important because losses reduce 
your gains is by at the end of the year. So that's my base plate. The second thing is what's new. A lot of things are new this past year. Uh, the IRS came out with a variety of little rulings, but uh, the big one that's gotten the most amount of attention is a proposed regulation called broker dealer regulations. And this places a, this is still uh, proposed. So some tax laws are made by Congress, so it's law. And then some things are left to con to IRS to tease out. And these are called regulations. And they have to solicit comments, what they did. And now we're waiting for them to become formal. The broker-dealer regulations place an obligation on any business that uh, acts in a, as a broker or dealer of cryptocurrencies to file a 1099 form with the IRS at the end of the year reporting their activities on your behalf. So um this is uh very controversial because the definition of who is a broker dealer seems to be quite broad and could suck in a lot of people who may only tangentially handle it one of the areas is like would a a defi uh protocol be a broker dealer because once you launch the protocol it's kind of out of people's hands and they want to hold somebody's foot to the fire so this is controversial uh a lot of people are going to not like uh the reporting of your transactions what they do is they they don't necessarily know how much your gains are on trading but they will report the total volume the proceeds of what you did this can be a large number especially if you're a high frequency trader and the irs will start to have visibility to that this past year was supposed to go into effect would be a 1099 form from anybody who paid you anything more than 600 uh at the very last minute the irs backed off on this and raise the limit to five thousand dollars so where it used to be twenty thousand dollars you'd get like a 1099 from paypal or, or wherever they they were it's now down to five thousand and next year be down to six hundred the reason they backed it off because they felt that it was inadequately communicated a lot of comp small businesses would be adversely affected by such a harsh implementation so well clinton who does the reporting if it's like a metamask uniswap transaction who has that obligation? They're trying to define the protocol authors of MetaMask as the people who have a legal obligation to do it. Or would it be MetaMask runs on computers somewhere, somebody running a computer that runs the, the software, do they have the legal obligations? So this is, you know, you can you can feel for the IRS trying to, you know, push into the space, but it causes it causes a lot of complexity just because uh you know, you might pay somebody an NFT to participate in your $100 raffle. Does that mean you become obligated to issuing 1099s? You know, it, it, this is this is where the, the 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 regulations they wrote. Let me tell you about this. They felt that they it'd be, it was very overreaching. Here's I was at an IRS conference. Uh, the IRS commissioner was there and spoke. They get in the neighborhood of um, two million. Uh, am I correct? No, two billion, two billion, ten ninety nines a year. With the new regulation, they'd expect to get another eight billion, ten ninety nines. So this is a staggering expansion of the type of information the IRS is collecting on taxpayers. Okay, uh, so this is all this is very controversial and uh, it, it, and it remains to be seen if it's implemented, but this will become a big issue once it becomes public, which I expect this spring it will. Uh, people are going to have absolutely flip out on this. It could drive a lot of companies to leaving the U.S. I got to ask this real quick because you said eight billion more. I, how many ten ninety nines per people do you have? Normally, people file one ten ninety nine or whatever, right? Or it, it just sounds. Are, are you talking like well, you 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 get side jobs and stuff and side hustles? And I mean, you got, you got a couple million people in the U.S. Plus, you got uh, companies, and so companies get ten ninety nines from other companies that pay them services, right? Okay. So. Okay. Uh, you know, you probably have one or two bank accounts. They may or may not be issuing you interest. Of course, for you, Travis, there's no money to bank accounts. You're not getting those. So, uh, but if you have dividends, you have 1099B brokerage for, you know, like Fidelity, you know, this kind of shit. So, uh, yeah, but they're, but they're expecting four. Now, then I found out when I was at the conference that they had just implemented a new system for tracking 1099s just the year, just this year. 
So now they've developed this new system, which kind of blows that one completely out of the water. So the operational aspects are very hard for them. And we said, what the points that we made, we're now uh, crypto tax audit. We're members of the uh, Digital Chamber of Commerce. We're the only tax prep firm that's a member with them. We said, this is going to be a vast duplication of numbers, right? So I traded something on MetaMask. I then moved that coin over to Coinbase and I, I cashed it out for cash. And now I got duplicate counting of my numbers. So they realized that they're going to get a massive overstatement of how much uh, you know income people have made off of crypto. Pro proceeds, not necessarily profits. So it, it, it's a big problem. It's a problem they want to have. I don't know. Is that a you know, do we do we like that? Do we want to protest the investigatorial overreach of uh, this branch of the Congress? I don't know, this branch of government. So, so, what are what are we as filers liable for then? If we're not sent a 1099 from whatever exchange or wallet or DeFi, or is it required that we file something or not? Well, no. I mean, that's just the IRS wants to know, and then they take what they know and they compare it to your tax return and see if all the income that they know about is accounted for on your tax return. Let me tell you, for example, did you all hear in this past year, uh, the IRS commissioner came out and said, we're going to increase audits of people that make over $400,000. Mm -hmm. Ye Secretary Yellen, President Biden, all reiterated the same thing. We're going to increase audits, not on the poor, but on the people making over 400000 Of course, everybody goes, yeah, yeah, go after those guys. Problem is, when they said income, they don't define income the same way you do, all right? You're thinking in terms of like how much money got to my back pocket. No, no. They're looking in terms of what they call total positive income. That's your income without any expenses. That's your proceeds from trading without the cost of having purchased those coins. If you're a high-frequency trader, get this. So let's say you have $20,000 and you'd like you invested all in one coin. At the end of the week, you sell it, you've made $1. The next week, you invest it again, $20,000, and you make $1. At the end of the year, you've done this for the two weeks, how much do you have? You have $20,052. But your total positive income, the proceeds from all your sales, is way over a million. So that person would fall into the people over 400,000 total positive income higher likelihood of, of auditing. The audit rates they're currently posting are at least at 12%, and that's before they bring on all the new auditors. So this is a big, big, big serious thing. And, I, and we've done, uh, I've been really struggling with a massive uh, question in my mind. I, I wanna bounce it off you guys, because you're aware of this. We know the IRS has said, you know, we're cracking down on audits. They said we can bring in lots more money, give us this budget, because the number one offenders are crypto people not paying their taxes. They said this. But we really haven't seen the crackdown. We haven't seen our friends dropping like flies from crypto audits. You know, And, and we know that before 2017, only 800 people had reported cryptos on their tax returns. And in 2017, you know, a big year, we still believe that less than 5% of the investors report it, okay? So 95% non-reporting. Even now, our research that the IRS backs it up shows that 75% of crypto investors are not reporting your crypto income in their tax returns. That means they're engaged in some level of, whether intentionally or unintentionally, of tax fraud and evasion. So, uh, <laughs> So uh, my question is, why haven't we seen the crackdown? There are statutes of limitations where they have like three years, certain situations, six years to audit you. Why is that? What we've discovered uh, is, is in convoluted way is that there is that basically all crypto, I call them active uh, crypto traders, uh, are will have no statute of limitations protections at all on their tax returns. By active, I mean that you were doing active trading, you were just a hodler, and you traded somewhat on foreign exchanges or on DeFi. And if that's the case, you are in a position where you have no statute of limitations protection. I, I won't get into the details, we'll post it on our website. We're also looking to work through the Digital Chamber of Commerce. We're gonna raise the red flag on this and demand that through the Digital Chamber of Commerce that we go to the IRS commissioner and offer tax amnesty programs so there can be limitations on this 
let me tell you an example. Uh, if, if you have, if you made, if you had ten thousand dollars of taxes you didn't report two thousand seventeen, and the IRS discovers that it is crypto related, the you'd be paying approximately twenty four thousand dollars to pay that off. All right, that's penalty plus taxes. It's two hundred forty percent. Our concern is that they can take all the time in the world to come after you, and the more they wait, the more they get additional eight percent interest on that. Just last month, the IRS uh, filed uh, legal charges against a Connecticut couple that in 2006 did not report a couple million dollars of income. That's 18 years ago. Wow. Think about that. You know, you know you did something. You probably did it wrong. You're probably terrified. Didn't know how to clean it up. You didn't have the money to clean it up. Years pass. You're thinking, like, life's good. Your kids are growing up. They're going to college. You think everything's great. And all of a sudden, like, the nuclear bomb just goes off in your life. Not only do you have, to owe a quarter million dollars penalty and potentially several years in jail, at least one year, then you still got to get honest. You got to pay all these back taxes, which for them was $8 million, plus interest and penalties. We're up into, you know, the $20 million range. They're completely devastated because they didn't address something 18 years ago. And this is where the IRS is. The, when it comes to taxes, the blockchain is not your friend. So what's the question? You, 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 you have this theory, but what, what are you asking? Well, because in Section 6501, Paragraph C8, it lays out a, an exclusion that the statute of limitations does not start unless you file form 8938 where you report foreign assets on what's considered foreign asset there's no tax no tax associated with this form but if you don't file it when you should have then the statute of limitations never starts so this is uh, something that you actually have been doing for us uh, and by the way you guys are going to want to check out crypto tax audit using our link badco.in forward slash tax is where you're going to go because part of what you do is make sure these forms are filed. So exactly. because you do that, then we're we're covered. Is that what that means? Exactly. You're covered. So we've been doing that since we started doing crypto returns in 2018. We saw that this foreign filing obligation was there. Now we've been digging into some of these weird, you know, statute of limitations. We saw, wow, look, this form just popped up again. And uh, on that form, you, re you have to report your foreign exchanges. And then it's actually a wide open. It says the tax law says specifically any financial instrument or contract for investment purposes where the issuer or counterparty is not a U.S. person. So when you go off and trade on MetaMask, you have no idea who your counterparty is, right? It's anonymous. Uh, so you have to assume they're not a U.S. person, you know. Uh, so as a result, you need to report the total sum of all that on that reform. Now, that form, if the IRS, so here's what the IRS can do is they are gathering data. Why? One of the data points that bothered me was why is the IRS still collecting transaction records for 2016 and 2017? Kraken just turned over this data. Circle Poloniex just turned over this data. You know, Coinbase already has. I We had one client going through an audit. Local Bitcoin already has turned over this transaction data. Basically, if, if you have dealt with any exchange that operates in the U.S., the IRS has your transaction history. Uh, they they have now got uh, Binance under their thumb. They've pled guilty to several court cases and stuff. Rest assured, part of that condition is going to be turning over all their transaction history and anybody that's U.S. Uh, to, to the Americans. So they have this in very broad picture. Now, what the IRS did this past year, well, I'm not scaring everybody. This should be your, this should be your Halloween show. Um, yeah, everyone has just already shit their pants. All right. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm oh, yeah. It gets worse. Oh, great. Thank you. This is exciting. Right. So you, you're, you're familiar with chain analysis and elliptical, right? These uh, blockchain research tools. These are investigative tools. Yeah. They go from like, here's a hack. With AI to be able to go out and do all oh, this yeah. stuff easily, right? Well, they're working this. So those tools right now are investigated. They go, this was a hack. We can trace it all the way through these different exchanges until it lands in Travis's wallet. Okay. We can, they, that's what those tools do. They're now asking those companies to design a different tool. It would be a portfolio tool where they can say, look, here we know this person. We know Joel dealt on, uh, he, this is his Binance account, his Kraken account, his Poloniex account. We know these are his addresses. Now, 
comb through all the blockchains and create a, a picture of all his holdings in all private wallets and everything. It, you know, how much did Joel own on uh, January 1st, 2020? And, and they want to be able to reconstruct that. And with that data, they can now come in and nail people in audits and investigations. So this is, this is, and they have all the time in the world to do this because there's no statute of limitations protecting people in general. I got to see, why would any company want to be located in America at this point when it comes to the, the, the next financial, you know, inst the, the next financial instruments that are being built are, are digital in nature. It makes total sense. But why would anybody want to do business with anybody in America at this point since, you know, they're, they're so, uh, you know, uh, unflexible? Well, uh, uh, it's a valid question, and I think it's for politicians to wrestle it out. I would say the main reason is because there's so much money in the U.S. willing to invest in this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But you're right. That's a that's a very good key, uh, especially if you are somebody like the founder of BitMEX and you didn't report correctly to the IRS, and all of a sudden they charge you and, and, and arrest you and do things like that. It's very it's a very scary business. What do you, what do you think happens in the event that uh, they let Trump win the election? and Republicans take over. Well, hey, on my, my Twitter space, Crypto Tax Fixer, I'm always pushing that we should be single issue voters. We should vote on Bitcoin. Uh, Ramaswamy has got uh, Trump talking about, you know, no CBDCs. I think that's big. Uh, I, I think uh, it's shameful what's going on with Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I mean, she's really trying to beat us back into the Stone Age. Uh, Russia and China realize that Bitcoin is their key to reserve and reserve currency independence from the dollar and they're investing and we need to as well, especially when we start looking at tier two privacy and security, national security uh, chains linked off of an independent blockchain uh, called Bitcoin. So, you know, I, I think if Trump becomes president, well, look, I mean, when Biden became president, he issued an executive order trying to get all the agencies to work together with a cohesive policy. Well, it's a shambles. You know, Elizabeth Warren is driving policy and, and so is Gensler, you know, so it, it's just chaos. I can only hope that positive things would happen. Uh, I think he's got some forward thinking people, uh, but we're at a point where we can't dilly dally anymore about a crypto policy. The government's falling behind both in a national security point of view and a financial point of view. I mean, the banks themselves are rising up to demand things. So, It's a wild time in the world of, of the cryptos for sure. So maybe, maybe ask this. So, you know, what are some of the most common triggers for IRS audits in the space, right? I know you talked a little bit about some of those things, but like what are some proactive steps that, that uh, people can use to help minimize that audit risk? And is there something that you guys do that's like, oh, this document goes in, most likely they're, they're going to look at it and go, eh, all right, we, we're not going to mess with these guys because we want to go with more low-hanging fruit. And I'm just kind of curious, what are some of those things that makes them go whoop, whoop, whoop? Well, the, the biggest thing is the IRS gets these 1099 forms, and they look at the total positive income. They want to make sure the total positive income that they know about is, equal, is less than or equal to what you filed on your tax return. Okay, that's a simple test. Uh, and you'd be surprised at how many people fail that. Roughly about 25% of the people fail that. Uh, we have a service at IRS Guard Dog, uh, which is a branch of crypto tax audit. You can go to our website and get it, uh, where we actually monitor your IRS accounts. We check prior years to see if there are unreported income that the IRS sees is greater than what you told them about, which is like a surefire way of getting audited. We also can see if the IRS has selected in the way, whatever way they select things, tag one of your returns for an audit in advance. We can see that uh, as much as six months in advance, and we can then work with you. We had one client who hadn't even filed his tax returns. He was a crypto trader, and we he got flagged for one year. We rapidly worked with him to prepare six years of tax returns. We then uh, we filed those, and he never got audited. The audited that was scheduled for him got canceled because the last thing you want is to have some auditors 
having your face on their dartboard, you know, that's the last thing you want because it will not go down pretty. It'll go down ugly. A typical audit going through the tax court, which most of them do, you know, you're running up into about you know three to four years. So we have three. Ta I have three cases in U.S. tax court right now. One of them we have absolutely won. The IRS threw down the towel and walked away. No change. They had been looking for this taxpayer for 1.5 million. They did their own gain calculations. My own in-house forensic accountants destroyed the IRS calculations, and they just simply threw in the towel and walked away. We have another thing going on right now. It's a like-kind exchange uh, court case. And uh, I mean, this will be heard uh, the middle of April, so we should probably touch bases, but I think I'm doing very well in winning this one. And we have another tax court case, high frequency trader, quarter million trades in a year. And the IRS, again, is all over the floor trying to do their game calculations. So we have a very good track record of winning. We go to tax court and what you can do, you ask about how you can protect yourself. As a IRS guard dog member, uh, you can have us monitor your own tax return for as little as $12 a month. $12 a month, that's less than Netflix. And uh, we will let we, we monitor on a weekly basis. On a monthly basis, we'll send you a, a report card letting you know how you stand at with the IRS. What you're looking for is all thumbs up, right? If we see a, a red flag, we let you know about it. You can call our staff. We can dig in. Let you, we can tease out the issue and see if it's something you need to address yourself with. There is no other service in the U.S. like this. It's extremely avant-garde. That we offer the $12 membership, which is mere monitoring, all the way up to full service, where we will, for no additional charge, we defend you on your audit to appeal stuff. It's like car insurance for your tax return. Let, let me speak to this because I've been using this for years, and there's a reason you're back for the fifth year, and a lot of you have uh, signed up for the service already. If you haven't yet, and you're a U.S. citizen, it's ridiculous that you do not have this. Every month I get an email with my report card and I look at it and I open it. And I'm like, please be all positive thumbs up to it. And it's great. I can, I sleep easy. I know that everything's being handled. You want to follow our link to badco.in forward slash tax. And uh, then that way you can say the bad crypto podcast has sent you to Clinton's crypto tax yeah. audit and it's well worth it. Yeah, it's great stuff. I, I got a question around this because AI and trading is becoming something that's really prevalent more and more so, right? You were starting to see AI trading platforms, which are going to be high velocity trades are going to be like, boom, boom, sell, buy, sell, do, 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 and they're going to be, it's going to be going off the rails, Right. So it would seem from hearing what you're saying, if that's happening, every single one of those transactions is going to be something that's got, like, I'm personally not using AI uh, for a trader, but I've thought about like, wow, there's going to be some great ones that come out because they're going to identify stuff pragmatically that most people won't. But then according to the IRS, according to what you're saying is each one of those little microtransactions are going to add up and create a lot of problems for somebody potentially. Absolutely. I, first of all, if that's a strategy, do you think it's going to win? You should do it, all right? Uh, but just realize that you have a tax liability. And it's not really, you don't owe any more taxes just because you're a high-frequency trader, but you have a reporting obligation, and you're going to be on the IRS's dartboard if you don't address it. So just budget into your whole mix of, of expenses for the year, you know, getting a professional tax return calculated for you. Actually, in the area of high-frequency traders, we have the highest success rates of defeating the IRS uh, in audits and, and in tax court. So you're bringing in you know, like a huge truckload of documents, like here's all the transactions, right? So for me, I have a minimal amount of transactions. Uh, uh, transactions normally I buy a coin and then it, it loses value and then I sell it in, pa in a panic and then I'm like, oh shit. I thought this was the bull run. Do they have an opposite copy trader uh, utility, Trav? Like, okay, I'm going to copy this guy and do whatever the opposite of he's doing. <laughs> they should call it the Kramer copy uh, trader. Right. Yeah. I will tell you, man, one, we, we have, I have the most incredible crypto gain team. Nobody else has a crypto gain calculator. We do full service calculation. We don't farm it out. We have our own analyst. We had one guy came to us with 5 million trades in a year. All right. And he made a lot of money. Good Lord. We had another guy came to us. He was a DeFi trader. He had 75 wallets we had to pull the trades off of. And we did. We were able to successfully do the gain calculation. These are Herculean tasks. You cannot do these by – an average person cannot do this by themselves. Not even a good person can do it by themselves. We have we have a, a rigid uh, practice, discipline approach, really, really a, a big four type of approach to how we do it. 
So that, that's but good. And, and for those making money, money, as one guy said, make money, pay taxes, make more money. I think that's great. For those of us in Puerto Rico under Act 60, then you can trade as often as you like and uh, not pay capital gains on any of those transactions. So that's right. That's right. I'm waiting. I'm still, you know, uh, I've got a circle of people here. And so far, not a one of them has announced that there, there's been an audit for them. I would think that that might be unless they suspect that somebody is cheating, like not adhering to the terms of the agreement for Act 60. I would have a hard time seeing the IRS going after those people because they know even if they find it, that no tax dollars are owed on it. Well, I think that's interesting because I think uh, towards the end of 22, I think the IRS put out a press release saying they were cracking down on these people. But you and I talked like we, you know, you had maybe there were, you know, there are old stories, but nobody knew. Nobody's cracked down. Now, is that because somebody's too embarrassed? Or maybe they've already left Puerto Rico and so they're not in the normal circle of communications and they're being cracked down you know, once they move back to the US? Hard to say. A lot of people are ashamed that they're getting audited and won't disclose that. But uh, but yeah, I, I, there is certainly, hey, look, fear is the IRS's tool. I mean, in terms of propaganda, IRS really works that and cultivates their fear machine, especially this time of year. Gross. You so if you are feared, go to badco.in forward slash tax. At least uh, hear what they have to say and see how they might be able to help you out. That's right. Uh, Clinton, any other final bits of wisdom you wish to share with the Republic of Bad Cryptopia as we approach tax filing? Hey, look, if you have not filed in the ta in the past and you realize you did something wrong, don't let that paralyze you. You know, I, I highly recommend you can call up uh, at CryptoTaxAudit.com uh, where you follow the link that Travis just said. You can go, you can schedule a consultation with one of my staff members, no charge, and we can talk about your situation confidentially and lay out a strategy to help you move from a, a risky place to a much safer place. And I think it'll be a, the type of thing that help you sleep, take care of your larger exposures, and, and put a strategy in place to protecting your, your financial future by not letting your past haunt you. And as always, taxes are sexy. Wow. Perfect. Clinton, thank you for your fifth appearance. Same time next year. It's a deal. So the moral of the story is file your taxes, eh? And I, I got to say, um, having Clinton file my paperwork and do my taxes is one of the smartest things I've done because I don't got to worry about this, you know, statute of limitations deal because uh, he's been filing now for years that form that most people don't even know about i mean who wants that surprise nobody it sounds like a shitty surprise yeah not, surprise. Not, dude, what a great dude helpful and i do tell you what man that getting that email every month is helpful to see like oh here we are oh look at this nice we're good so, yeah great stuff he says that um they will know about even an open file into your account six months before you'd even get a letter from the irs if they do some sort of you know investigation mm -hmm. just the fact that they open your file to look at it they get alerted to that and so that's uh, you want this guys it's it's so inexpensive use our link please since you heard about it here badco.in forward slash tax is the link that you want to get to and tell clinton that bad crypto sent you uh there you go. especially if you've been staying bad yeah How, how's the uh, how's the winter uh, up there right now Trev? Uh, it's nice and warm now there's the uh, super bowl parade is tomorrow and mm -hmm. i think it's supposed to be in the high 50s or low 60s or something so it's like way way good right so um most the most of the crappiest whole cold winter stuff i'd say you really get about six six weeks of super cold winter here and then it's done so Mostly well, in uh, in the crypto world, the crypto market cap has been approaching two trillion. We're not there yet. One point nine three as of uh, timestamp for 18 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time on the 13th of February. And Bitcoin did pass 50,000. It's back in the 49s at this moment. But we did hit that 50,000, which only puts us 19,000 
off of the all-time high, the having approaching in less than 90 days, and it's going to get crazy. We're seeing the crypto markets coming back, uh, Ethereum 2600. We see certain NFT projects coming to life. And uh, buckle in, gang. It's going to be an exciting, I would say, 18 months. It will be. We've seen this before. We've seen it a couple times before. And, it, you know, history doesn't uh, always repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And I'm looking forward to some new poetic jingles. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for uh, for joining us. We appreciate you. We would love and cherish your five-star reviews, especially if they're funny. Go over to iTunes or wherever you're listening that takes reviews and go drop us one there. Maybe we'll read it on the show. And, of course, until the next time, please stay back. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.